tutorial we're going to look at uh, ray diagrams for concave and convex mirrors. Okay, to begin with just some basics, um, a concave mirror looks like this. The little dashes represent the back of the mirror. And um, a concave mirror is often referred to as a converging mirror because when light rays enter the mirror, they converge towards a point. And that point there is called the focal point. Um, the distance from the focal point to the mirror is called the focal length, that distance there. And um, <clears throat> the center of the mirror here is called the pole, and an imaginary line that goes through the here is called the principal axis. Uh, convex mirrors are the opposite way around. Okay, they're often referred to as diverging mirrors because light rays that enter into the convex mirror, the light rays tend to diverge, spread out, and those diverging light rays come back to uh, a focal point as well, but we call this a virtual focus. And normally we do a little dash there to represent the virtual focal point. Okay, so you'll be expected in your exam to um, be able to complete ray diagrams for both convex and uh, concave mirrors. All right, we'll start with concave. So you've got a concave mirror. Now in the exams, normally they don't draw the mirror in, they just draw a vertical line to represent the mirror. So all the light rays we draw on this diagram are going to be are going to go back to the vertical line. Uh, this line I've drawn through here is the principal axis, and we're going to put our object here. The object is normally just an arrow. Um, and the focal point, I'm going to label at that point here. <clears throat> uh, now with concave mirrors, uh, any light ray that moves along parallel to the principal axis will be reflected through the focal point. Any light ray that moves through the focal point, <clears throat> and that light ray was meant to go through the focal point, will be reflected parallel to the principal axis. Now at the point where those two light rays intersect, that is how you determine the, the uh, location of the image. Now obviously in your exams you would do this neatly with a ruler and it's really important that you show the directions of the light rays on the incoming light rays and the ones that have been reflected. Um, okay so once you've found the location of the image you normally have to describe um, the nature of the image and um, the nature of the image can be described in three ways. Either it's real or it's virtual um, it's either diminished or it's magnified, or the third one is it's either upright or it's inverted. So how do we describe this, this object, this image here? Um, for a start, we call this a real image. And a real image is an image where light rays actually cross at that point. Real light rays cross to form that image. A virtual image is an image formed on the other side of the mirror where light rays only appear to come together at that point. So in this case it's real. Uh, for a concave mirror it will always be real if the image is on the same side as the object. Um, what it means is if I was to put a bit of paper here as a screen you would actually be able to focus the light rays onto that piece of paper. Uh, that's not possible for virtual images. The fact that my arrow here is upside down and underneath the principal axis shows me that um, the <clears throat> the image is inverted, okay, or upside down, and uh, and finally, the image is diminished. Okay, so the image is smaller than the object. Um, you can tell that because uh, the way that I've drawn this anyway, it shows that the image is uh, closer to the mirror than the object was, which means it will be diminished. 
if it was in the same location as the object, it'd be the same size, and anything that's beyond would be uh, magnified. So those are the three things you would, you would say in terms of the nature of the image. Um, right, this is true for a concave mirror when the object is um, in front or behind the focal point. It's important you also realize what happens if we move it and uh, make it so that the object is now in front of the focal point. So I'll draw a slightly different diagram. We've got our principal axis through here again. Um, we have our mirror represented by a vertical line and I'm just going to draw the mirror in here to show you that it is a concave mirror. In this case we have our object located here much much closer than before and we have our focal point sitting here. So the object is in front of the focal point and we'll see what changes with the uh, where the image is located. Um, so like last time a light ray that moves parallel to the principal axis will always be reflected back through the focal point <clears throat> and uh, and this time, if we take a light ray and uh, we go from the focal point through top of the object to the, the mirror, so it looks like this, and that would actually go to the mirror. Okay, so last time we went from the, the object uh, through the focal point, this time we're doing a sort of similar thing but kind of backwards, we're going from the focal point to the object to the mirror, um, that light ray when it hits the the mirror will be reflected back parallel. Now what you'll notice is that if you have a look at the two reflected light rays they will not come together to form an image on the side which means the image must be located on the virtual side of the mirror. To locate the image what we do is we dot back the reflected light rays that's really important so this one's reflected dot it back this one's reflected we dot it back. And where the reflected light rays appear to come together behind the mirror, this is the location of the image. So in this case, the image is described as being virtual. Okay, so light rays appear to go there, but they don't actually go there. It's described as being upright. And it's also described as being magnified because the image is clearly larger than the original object. Now in terms of practical applications, well, uh, for the case here where you have an upside down image, um, I can't really think of any good practical applications. Um, certainly if you're looking into the inside of a spoon, the concave part of a spoon, at um, a distance you will see your image being upside down. Um, or if you actually take those light rays and try and um, reflect them onto a piece of paper, you would be able to form an image, a real image. Um, this one here is uh, often used in shaving mirrors and, um, and makeup mirrors where you want the, the image to be magnified or larger. So those are um, two sort of applications with the, um, the concave mirror. And of course, uh, this is a case where you have your object in front of the focal point and um, the one over here is a case where you have your your object um, behind the focal point. So for convex mirrors, it's a similar sort of story. Okay, drawing your your principal axis, vertical line representing the mirror, and we'll put our object here. All right, um, <clears throat> a convex mirror is going to have a a virtual a focus, so a focal point behind the mirror. A light ray that goes parallel to the principal axis um, will be reflected and it's going to come back in line with the virtual focus. So you imagine we line this up here, it's going to be reflected back that angle there. A light ray that's aimed at the virtual focus, okay, so I'm aiming it towards that virtual focus, is going to be reflected parallel to the principal axis. If we dot back the light rays, the image will be located where the light rays appear to 
across behind the mirror. There's our object. So in this ray diagram, we would describe the image as being uh, number one, it is virtual because the image appears behind the mirror and uh, light rays only appear to go there. Uh, number two, it is upright as shown by the diagram. And number three, it is diminished. Now, unlike uh, concave mirrors, it doesn't actually matter where you place the object. You could bring it forward, you could bring it backwards. Um, in either case, you're always going to produce uh, virtual um, diminished images. And uh, that's just due to the nature of the, the mirror and the way that the light rays behave. Um, so uh, applications-wise, um, convex mirrors are typically used in any kind of place where you want to um, the rays to diverge. Uh, examples can be security mirrors where you want to see around corners. Um, they're used, I think, in uh, side mirrors of, of cars for the same reasons. Um, and I think, uh, and yeah, so any any kind of thing where you want to see um, have a wider range of view. Um, so that pretty much covers everything at uh, achieved maybe even merit level for concave mirrors and um, for ray diagrams. Uh, in the next tutorial I'll talk about how you can use the formula or a formula to work out an unknown such as the, uh, the image position, the size of the image and the magnification.